Three minutes. Taoiseach, there has been some debate in this House recently on the question of a proposed liquefied natural gas terminal at Shannon, which would use fracked gas imported from the US. Now today, I want to talk about the issue of a proposed LNG facility which would store imported fracked gas from the US at Cork Harbour. The company that want to import the fracked gas are the US-based Next Decade, who signed a memorandum of understanding with the Port of Cork on this issue in 2017. Next Decade wants to frack gas at the Rio Grande in South Texas, near the Mexican border, from 223 onward. The plan is to liquefy the gas and export it to Cork through the Texas port of Brownsville. A Sunday newspaper earlier this month reported that next decade plan to submit a planning application before the end of this year. Taoiseach, millions have marched to demand action on climate change. This Friday, school students will strike again. Only yesterday, the UN's annual report found no sign that carbon emissions will peak soon. Under pressure, your government agreed to ban fracking in Ireland. Are you now going to allow fracked gas in through the back door? Fracking is more dangerous to the climate than the, than the burning of coal. The methane emitted from fracking is second only to carbon in the damage done to our environment. Yet, Taoiseach, you have not closed the door on the idea of using fracked gas at Shannon or at Cork. In fact, you actually held the door open when you said that fracked gas could be part of the answer to Ireland's energy security needs. Now, you know that if these projects go ahead, this state is locked into the use of fossil fuels for another 40 years. You also know that substantial use of fossil fuels in the EU's energy system for even another 15 years is simply incompatible with the Paris commitments. You face one way on peat, but you seem to face another way on fracked gas. Why? Why do you not state clearly that fracked gas will not be allowed to be part of the Irish state's energy mix? And my question, have you, your government, any minister in your government, or any government department been lobbied on this issue by next decade, by the Port of Cork, or by any of the corporate entities involved in the Shannon project? And has there been any conversation or correspondence between you, your government, any minister in your government, or any government department with either the US Chamber of Commerce or the US Embassy on this issue? Thanks, thanks, Deputy. I, I haven't been, been lobbied on it uh, personally, but uh, I can't answer that question for every government minister in the entire civil service. Um, and uh, I don't think uh, you, you expect me to do it. Do it's uh, more of a rhetorical question. Um, but uh, let me state this very let, let me state this very clearly. Um, lobbying is not a crime. Uh, lobbying is part of what happens uh, in a democracy. And politicians, ministers in government and those in opposition are lobbied all the time by all sorts of interest groups, commercial interest groups, trade unions, NGOs, and so on. And we listen to what they have to say, uh, and then we come to decisions to what we believe is in the best interests of the public. And that's how democracy does work, uh, and that's how democracy should work. Uh, and of course, the lobbying legislation, which uh, we brought in in government uh, with Labour in the previous uh, uh, government makes sure that there is transparency around that uh, and those bodies have to um, declare uh, any lobbying that they've carried out. Um, but if there has been lobbying, that would be entirely normal and what you'd expect to happen in a democracy, that commercial interests will lobby government just as unions do, just as NGOs do, just as individual members of the public do, and then governments and people come to decisions to what they believe is in the best interest. Uh, in terms of this project in Cork, um, I am aware of it. I don't know much about it. Uh, it's not a government project, uh, although Port of Cork, as you will rightly point out, uh, is a state-owned enterprise. Uh, it's very much my view that uh, we will continue to use gas um, for the next couple of decades. Uh, it's part of the transition um, to uh, net zero in 2050. 
and most, the vast majority of climate scientists accept that we will need to continue to use gas as a transition fuel during that period, a much cleaner fuel uh, than coal or oil. Um, but I would prefer that we use our own natural gas from CARB, um, or more if we find it, uh, and also biogas. And Gas Networks Ireland has very interesting plans uh, to uh, develop its network for biogas uh, as an alternative. Uh, the government uh, has banned fracking um, in Ireland, uh, and that's a private member's bill introduced by my colleague Tony McLaughlin. Uh, to ban fracking in Ireland. Uh, I'm not sure if we're in a position to ban the imports of frack gas from other jurisdictions. I, I'd have to check that out. Uh, that may not be possible under international trade law and European law, um, but I will check it out. And it may well already be the case um, that frack gas um, is coming in already uh, over the UK pipeline, um, but I'm not 100 sure if that's correct or not. Uh, in terms of the thing that you attributed to be a quote from me, I don't think that is a quote from me. It's perhaps a paraphrase. Uh, Deputy Barry has one minute. Chuck, um, you banned fracking onshore under pressure, not just from deputies in this house, but the movement uh, in society. Unfortunately, you didn't back the amendments uh, from uh, left deputies in the house uh, for the banning of offshore uh, fracking. That should be done as well. And the government has indicated support for the project in Shannon. Now, I know that you've said you won't proceed on that pending an energy review. So I would like to ask, will all work related to the importation of frack gas be frozen while this energy review takes place? And to be specific, should next decade decide to submit a planning application for a floating storage regasification unit at Whitegate in Cork Harbour while this review is taking place, will the application be processed or will it be frozen? You should be able to answer me that because it's your review. And finally, to be clear, Taoiseach, I think you are walking into something of a storm on this issue, unless um, you, you change course. Already, more than 2,000 people have signed a Not Here, Not Anywhere petition against frack gas in Cork Harbour. If a planning application goes ahead, it could and it should be the signal for that campaign to go from, cyber, from cyberspace oh and out onto the streets. The Tisha has one minute. Thanks, Deputy. We, um, uh, we live in a democracy. Uh, I know you're uh, at best ambiguous about your support for democracy, but we do live in a democracy. Oh. Well, no, no, you, 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 you've been very supportive. You, 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 you've been very supportive of far left regimes in Venezuela Deputy and in Cuba Deputy and other Barry. places uh, that, 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 are, that are not democratic. Deputy Barry. Oh. Deputy Barry. Please, Deputy Barry, condemn Political Venezuela and Cuba, and I will. Condemn Venezuela and Cuba, and I will. Political charges are admissible. It's a political charge. Oh, well, there's no, there's no such point. There's no such point in that or a point of order during questions, Tisha. There's no such thing as a point of information or a point of order during question time. And perhaps you might. Perhaps you might equip yourself with the standing orders. Not you, Mick. Not you, Mick. Take an opportunity to acquaint yourself with the standing orders. We're going to move on. We're moving on to promised legislation. I, I and acquaint be, yourself with the standing I, I, orders. I, I would be happy to withdraw if the deputy can show me evidence of his campaign for free and fair elections in Cuba and in Venezuela. Peace, um, peace is I'm not talking about the 1930s. I'm talking about, I'm talking about now. I'm talking about now, deputy. Now, our time. Our time. Deputy, Deputy Coppinger, Deputy Coppinger. I'm not talking about Lenin or, or no, Bolsheviks no, or Gulags or Stalin no, no or any more intervention. Uh, you admire. I'm talking about our time. He's withdrawing it. Um, but I, I would like to ask you about Everybody could be helpful if there was silence. I, listen to the t shirt I, I'm, I'm, I'm forever trying to answer questions in between interruptions, asked Cancorla. I think you uh, wanted to, to suggest that you might withdraw I will. unconditionally. No, 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 no certainly no. not. No. Uh, but um, but to, answer, to answer the deputy's question, uh, we live in a democracy. In a democracy, we have an independent planning process. Uh, I assume if there is an application made, it has to either go to Cork City or County Council or directly to Mbor Planola. And in a democracy, people have the right to object. 
an oral hearing will happen and a planning decision will be made. That's how things work in a democracy. It's not about uh, protests and riots and all of those things. Uh, it's about people engaging in a proper democratic um, uh, process. In relation to, in relation to importing frac gas, um, it's something I need to check out. I actually don't know if it's possible for us uh, to ban the importation of frac gas into Ireland, um, but it is something uh, that we will examine. We're going to move on to...